over to you. Okay, mate. I'm all over. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, it's, thank you for, for, for joining in. Uh, now, if you see, I have the scarf. I've got the fleece. I've got what do people call a base layer as a T-shirt to, to me uh, underneath and something else. Because outside in SW19, it is um, currently one degrees. Um, all right. So uh, at one degree, uh, I um, yeah, I thought I, I've opened the window wide and I've tried to recreate uh, Spitsbergen, which may sound silly, uh, but um, that's what I'm trying to do now. What I'd really like is for this to advance, uh, which it isn't doing. Um, okay, so, right. Okay, we're up and we're away. Um, oh dear, it's jumping out. Excuse me, just a moment, just a moment. I'm gonna start with this one, hopefully. Yes, that's where we should be. And if I hit that, I do apologize. And we're up and running. Good, ice, the land of magical ice, of land and tongue, uh, as you can see. Uh, if you look very carefully down the bottom right-hand corner, you will see Zodi, so that gives you some idea of scale. Please nobody think Spitsbergen is Antarctica with polar bears. It doesn't have the scale of Antarctica, but it's all, it does have the magic. It's also a great deal less expensive, and of course, a great deal quicker to get to, a, a flight to Oslo, um, and then a three-hour flight to Longyearbyen. It's on our time, uh, the, the GMT, uh, the difference being if you were there right now, you'd get very little daylight if, if at all. If you're there in June, um, which over the 20 years I've been going there, I, I've always thought is the best time to be there for ice, um, you get 24 hours of daylight. Um, this uh, I want you to bear in mind because the, the real grail, uh, the sort of raison d'etre for being there for me is to combine ice with polar bears. The key as well is timing. That was taken five minutes after midnight. Uh, it's one of my favorite polar bear shots. Um, most people have gone to bed. They were woken um, quietly, but insistently. I've known people go to bed with their boots on um, because uh, knowing there's a chance in ice that they could be woken. So time is important. It's a, it's a valuable commodity. Uh, and um, it, it's, it's everything. Uh, it really is. I'm sorry why this keeps this, the, for some reason, this keeps jamming. Uh, I'm going to sort this out once and for all. I, I, do, I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, if that box has to stay up there, I'm sorry, uh, but I don't want to have to keep coming out of this. Those ones were taken at one in the morning. Do you all want to be there on the bow, port side? Of course you do. Of course you do. Um, the important thing about that image is that bear approached the ship. There is a quantum leap anywhere with wildlife uh, between you approaching an animal and that animal approaching you. It was inquisitive. Maybe you know, a, a polar bear is, is very similar to a grizzly bear, black bear, sees everything through its nose. Um, however, finding bears in scenery like this is hard. It is staggeringly beautiful. Yes, it is. Um, and the single most important thing about any expedition, I'm going to call it that, I'm not going to use the C word this evening, it is an expedition, generically a voyage, but a quest, um, is the ship you choose. Now, if you're going south and you go on a ship of more than 100 people, you're going to do your landings in stages. You might get an hour and a half if you're lucky, which when you've paid the price of a decent saloon car for your holiday, it seems like short changing of the very worst kind. Up here, the same. It's got to be a small ship. But the single most important things are the hull, the bow can deal with ice, and the skipper. And I'm thrilled, and I've been insisting on this. It wasn't a complete showstopper, but um, Captain Dennis, uh, the, the urbane, suave Croatian I've worked with twice before in the North and the South, will be joining us on this. And it's critical. We've worked together. I like working with him. This is typical scenery. Spitsmergen it translated is, means these, these jagged peaks, uh, a single uh, guillemot. Um, so it's not just about polar bear. There is, um, there are other animals there, uh, reindeer being one of large uh, male there, but also it's wild scenery. That's a fog bow. Now, if this was, if I had an audience in front of me, I'd ask how many of you have seen a fog bow? I've seen one in the UK on the wash in Snettisham, and I've seen three times up here. You get sea ice, a low sun, 
cold temperature, moisture in the air, you can get a fog bow. And that is something I'd wait people for and did on the, on the Pioneer last year. That's way north. There wasn't much ice uh, around Spitsbergen. And so as we have no itinerary, uh, if you have a meticulous itinerary, if you say we do a circumnavigation, well, fine, but all you'll be doing is travel. The idea with any wildlife is you work tremendously hard to find good wildlife. You're in wild country, as you can see. Whilst it is a dramatic photograph, and don't please feel that those two zodiacs are in any sort of danger, they're not, um, because it's the, the, the long lens has foreshortened that distance. Uh, but that glacier in the 20 years I've been going has retreated almost two kilometers. So it's beautiful to see, uh, but uh, it's, it's alarming. And, and of course, we all, we all know the reason why. Our job is to find you extraordinary experiences like this. And we will, we are in polar bear country. If ever we are in it, which you are ostensibly the whole time, you are in, um, in Spitsberg and we have a watch on 24 seven. Now we can't, the captain can't get out of his hours, but the first mate can take the, can take the, the, the tiller. Uh, and it's uh, down to us. And, and Jared and I feel very strongly about this, that, we put you in those positions. How you then choose to record these on whatever precision optics, be they just your eyes, a pair of Leicas or Soroskis, or a, through a, a, a big piece of glass, that's down to you. If it's photography, you'll get a lot of advice from me and we'll have other good photographers on board. But it's not a geek fest of big, long glass lenses and laptops. It's just not. As Jared said, we want to have some fun. But we get something like this, the most marketable commodity in areas north or south where you have capricious weather is time. You need time. Same bear up against the ice wall uh, on North Island in Spitsbergen. It had stopped on this iceberg for a rest. And were we going to go anywhere there? Did we have the most northerly post office to visit or some meaningless walk ashore to have Cumbrian like scenery just bouncing around on some wet tundra? No, we stay because these you, you even notice if I just there's it's, it's a little bit gray there. It's a bit grimy there. And then it got even better. You don't want to be missing that. It's about four or five hours with that bear before it pushed off. And then, of course, we left. We're not going to pursue it uh, in, an, in an ice vessel. So, yeah, those experiences, absolutely critical, okay? And as anyone who knows me about photographs, I like this, but I actually prefer that. That is a polar bear in its environment. That is a photograph you pretty much only get in Spitsbergen. Um, that's where it's on sea ice, it's in June, and the fact that it's a tiny part of the photograph makes the photograph. I could have used a big, long lens, doesn't really interest me. Uh, I want it in its environment. Really, the essence of a good photograph is if I took that photo and if Jared or Sue took that photograph and they were stood next to me and I, we all slapped our photos down as a 10 by 8, I just want somebody to look at mine longer than they look at Jared's. Um, it doesn't mean mine is better. It just arrests their attention a little bit more. That's really why there's acres of prose written about wildlife photography, most of it pious and pompous. I saw one the other day that said, I'm not a photographer. I'm a capturer of light. No, I'll tell you what you are. I mean, astonishing. Um, however, sometimes you've got to be prepared to put in some yards. Uh, we had a big shift. This is this next sequence uh, is a long time ago. It's 15 years ago. And... Uh, it was 16 years ago. It was remarkable. We had two days of sea fog, high pressure, but there was lots of sea ice, the fog came down and you struggle. And you get a bit tired of telling, being told by some leader, oh, how atmospheric. Whenever anyone says moody, it means there's not a photo and you're not seeing anything. Uh, and I remember waking at four and going to the, I was woken because the sun came through the cabinet, it had broken through and I thought, here we are, we're in sea ice. Went onto the bow, just pulled on a down jacket and I thought I saw something and one of the staff was already up in the bridge. You need the height. There are these tiny ships of 12 or 14 people, but no, you need the height to find stuff. And then way ahead it was, it was a mail bearer. And just before I came up to wake the ship, I remember, I remember the guy now, someone you know, Jared Martin saying, stand by Paul, come out, get up here. And there was a mother with two, so we'd seen four bears before 4.30. Yeah, I'm going to wait. You, you all want to be woken for that. It was extraordinary. This was a day I, I posted this last week, and a lot of people have contacted me saying, still, this is the best wildlife day they've had. 
uh, and it would be in my top five or six, certainly, because we had time with these who put on a pretty decent show. And listen, um, if you see your first polar bear, if it is your first polar bear, you're going to take record shots. Most of you know how I feel about record shots, but it's entirely acceptable. When they're posing in perfect light with cobalt and turquoise backdrop behind them with reflection, it's not too hard to mess up when they're only 70 meters away. When you have a small ship, quiet and can deal with ice and doesn't run scared from and you don't have some ridiculously clinical schedule that means you wouldn't see that because you'd be fast asleep getting ready for your second sitting at breakfast before shuffleboard and bingo. You are utterly denied these experiences. There's your record shot. And that's them swimming off. There's your photograph. Simple. It's grainy. Yes, it is. It's taken on a slide. That's not processed or anything. Anyway, some people then went to breakfast then, which was uh, obviously <laughs> a disgrace. So I took great delight in going back into the into the uh, into the dining room and say, what are you doing? We've got a mother and bears. And they said, no, we've seen that, Paul. They swam off. I said, no, no, they were on the starboard side. Come to port, please. And this is what we call coys, cubs of year. That's altogether different. These are about five or six months old. And this was extraordinary. And they put on a show, as you can see, and see, and see, and then posed deliciously for us. Um, yeah, I remember somebody saying who was new to photography. I knew this was extraordinary, Paul, because I found myself deleting these sort of photographs because one of the cubs had their eyes half closed. You know you've taken some good one. The next photo is still one of my favorite photographs, frankly, ever, uh, because they swam away and they posed like this for about a minute. It could be maybe my favorite polar bear photograph because it's everything that's right with an expedition. And of course, so you can read so much into it, everything that is wrong, or, you know, polar, that's no good to polar bears, except as a mattress. Polar bears need big pans of ice to hunt. Um, and frequently they have it. The numbers are not dwindling there, but they are being affected. Their hunting patterns are changing because there's not so much ice. Also, they're picking up the pollutants right at the bottom of the food chain. They're at the top of it. So they're, they're, there's issues. You notice the scarring on the, the mother's nose um, you see all the black there. That's what that is, is that mother essentially needs them, the, the mother of root canal work. When they, they've broken a tooth while feeding on probably a seal, maybe fighting, uh, and it's got infected and it manifests itself with the scarring down the nose, just in case you need another reason to feel sorry for it. So I'm going to do a series of, of vignettes, not all polar bear ones, from my time in Spitsbergen. And the point being is if you've got nine and a half days there or something on a small ship with only 40 five people or whatever it is, a captain like Dennis, the polar pioneer staff, who most of which I know, and some of them I've worked with before, as long as you get a bit of weather, you, you just don't know uh, what sort of experience you're going to have. This was another one. This was only five years ago. And that was day two. We just, we didn't get off the ship. We just went straight for the ice. And that's again, a mother with yearlings. But again, you notice they were quite a distance away, but I wouldn't close in on a photograph like that. This was altogether different. We were trying to get people off the ship. Uh, to go ashore to see some morris and um <laughs> we just saw this mother and, and these two cubs if you look at the one at the back it, it's interesting because they were going quite quickly which means they've got some energy you'll see it's its face and its shoulders are stained what that is is that's blood from a seal kill and it's just beginning to oxidize which turns it from a, a sort of crimson to a, a more russet color uh, on its and really the mother would probably they wanted probably wanted to get away from that kill because normally she would she would groom that but just for a moment, uh, okay, it's cold in my in my um, my dining room here in SW19 because I've made it so. So take yourself to about two degrees, zodiac, camera, binoculars, just your eyes. You wanted to go ashore to see some walrus. You couldn't. Would you complain if you were one of those? I don't think you would. And anyway, about five minutes later, you got to see... Um, yeah, you got to see uh, Warus anyway. That's how I want to see him anyway. Um, they are extraordinary um, animals. But yeah, this is the same Zodiac ride. The same Zodiac ride. You know, that. so that wasn't scheduled. There was nothing about that. I remember being on the bridge. Now, just in case you're wondering, there's a, there's a, a bit of, um, Jared will call it housekeeping. When we spotted them, myself and the expedition leader, it was like, okay, we're putting all the Zodiacs in the water, but they're all in a holding pattern. 
okay so it took i don't know 15 20 minutes to get everybody down because it's no good one goes off and scares them or just two zodiacs see it you know that's not how it works um it really doesn't polar bears can give you good sport you just need time you just do and you might be a bit tired. i'm not going to say you're going to be on your knees at the end of an expedition like this you might be but you don't want to be missing moments like this this one we had to work for a long time we had to pick our way through the um the the, the sea ice um before we got into into range um and um the uh alternative to this of course is when they swim towards you so that's a mother and two they may be two years old even those ones who swam right towards us another midnight bear that was taken at midnight i think it was about 2011 12 um, in calm water, it's perfect. And also lovely to see a big, healthy bear. That uh, male has dined healthily, probably on a bearded seal quite recently. Now, sometimes uh, the, the, you go to an area that's called the Hinlopen Strait. That's between North and South Island. And you always have to survey every little piece of ice. The point being is bears generally won't clamber onto something like this in case they want a rest. Uh, but you know, we had almost gone past this and then it put up its head and there you have it here and here. I actually prefer that. You see that one kind of ambushes it. It's cropped the edge of the, the sort of turquoise, um, the, 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 the port side of the burger. That doesn't work. Again, you see how that it gives the photograph room to breathe. It swam off. And I remember people went to get it was quite cold that day and um, probably only about, you know, freezing or two. Uh, but. We were with it a while, it was fine. The moment it woke up and made off to, it had had its rest and it was going to swim off. It's not, it was like, let's leave it. I remember staying on the stern as we pulled away and I initially on a, I think I was on a 500 millimeter lens and I put a, um, a 1.4 converter on it as we pulled further away as it was swimming. And I just, and then I put a two times on, I thought, I bet it, and there was this tiny piece of ice. And I'm sure you've all done this when you've been uh, in, in formal retreats, uh, wherever it is in Africa or, or oh, South America or whatever you're doing and you think oh go on come on please and it did it, it popped up onto that and again it's it's in that um coterie of images of yeah you know it's, it's a little bit thin you can see it's scarred but it's not the end of the world but let's be honest um we all feel happier seeing bears big fat healthy in snow yeah you can get snow in summer uh, and that one couldn't have given us stuff about us um Look, it's something I know steps, it, uh, frankly, it underwrites everything they do. Ethically, they're, they're uh, dynamite on, on everything. So this next photo will distress you, Jared, as it does me. Uh, and I know uh, you can't point the finger of blame always at fishermen, but often you can. In terms of litter, let's just think about what the half-life of that fishing net is or that remains of that fishing net. That bear has died. There is clearly the residue of some fish or something that, you know, it's picked up the scent and picked it up. Uh, and that's, that's distressing. There's not a great deal we can do about it here, but education turns people into ambassadors, turns people into, you know, I wouldn't normally uh, boast a photograph like that. Let's move away from a bear trying to eat a piece of fishing line uh, to something altogether different. This was in 2013. One of the staff spotted that bear four miles away. Think about that. Swarovski scope. If you have scopes, bring them, please, please do. Isn't it cool if you find the animal? You know, how, how are you really going to lord it over? You lord it over me. Um, but yeah, you've got to find them. I always say the most important thing about a guide, I can, in Africa at Kachechi, I can find you any guide who can give you gestation periods, uh, can give you all sorts of things. However, what we really need uh, is people who can find stuff. Job number one is like a, a rugby analogy. You know, I don't want the hooker turning up in the three quarters until he learns to throw in at 100%. Job number one, with this has only just killed this bearded seal. And I remember saying, I whispered over the microphone, the last, last thing I said for a long time was, look, we're going to drift in here. We turn the engines off. We just use the side thrusters. We will move off when the bear moves off. Turned out it was 72 hours later. There's a couple of people who went the whole way through. <laughs> and I said, look, simple rule, when the bear sleeps, we'll sleep. Let me show you. That's the bear moving in towards it. Uh, yeah, as a photographer, you can't go too far. Up. Notice the far front foot ahead. Always, doesn't matter what the animal, tiger, lion, leopard, polar bear, grizzly. 
if it's walking perpendicular to you, right to left, left to right, you want that far pore. It opens up the chest. Uh, and that, again, is a photograph I could look at longer. Just, again, that's great, but yeah. And then this is a younger bear who has already picked up the scent coming in. So you can see the difference in size, the one on the left, not easily, but already you've got the, um, the birds coming down uh, to feed. Uh, and um, yeah, so they did, they had a bit of a scrap. Then the younger one pushed off and kept in a sort of holding pattern. And then the, this, the one on the left had a good feed. Then it went up on to get a viewing point over its, its, its the spoils as it were. Uh, and um, yeah, take a look at that. It then did a little Pilates after you've eaten, always good, do you see that? And a bit more advanced level here. Um, and then had a bit of a stretch. And then, you know, the, the next, um, you know, after it's done that, the next, yeah, this is pretty good, Ivory Gulls. Uh, ivory Gulls is sort of, uh, it's not the rarest, but there's about 27, 28 different species of birds. Um, this is one of the more, a bit, not dissimilar to a snow petrel in terms of very beautifully formed, all white, the, the, the black feet tuck away uh, into the tail feathers. Uh, but yeah, so they've been attracted by the kill as well. Um, then the weather closed in a bit. The bears slept. We slept. The next morning, uh, they, they, they squared up a bit. You can see the difference in size there and how unconcerned, you see the glaucous gull on the right as well, how unconcerned uh, the male is there as well. So yeah, special. Eventually, uh, it goes back to the kill. Uh, and yeah, they all, they all got a bit of a feed um, in the end. Okay, so I showed you that photograph earlier of the, the Monaco glacier exploding. Um, which was, yeah, you know, something I, 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 you never lose at the Monaco Glacier ever, ever, ever. It's, uh, it's extraordinary. Um, so yeah, let's take you there. Now, what you get with the runoff from underneath the glacier, which is the sort of warmer water, which frankly hemorrhages the ice, which means you get these what's known as carving. It can be a couple of boulders or it can be thousands of tons. But yeah, it's very, very photogenic as you see that's not the photograph i'm proud of uh the slower shutter speed ones are more interesting but when you're on the front there and i'm going to take you to last year now last june end of june this was i'm going a bit earlier in june when i hopefully get a bit more local sea ice um i'm going to take you through a day here. all right let's get in the zodiacs it's clear we're in position don't need to worry about other ships because they're not even thinking about doing activities starting at a wake-up call of 4 15 half a cup of tea or coffee, that would probably be enough with a Zodiac trip. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but we're not going to bring you back if there's something good going on and you're wearing waterproof trousers anyway. So it's not the end of the world. We've got a good laundry on board. Very good food on board as well. Uh, it's not a cuisine, but it's bounteous. You need it. You're out in the cold a long time. Okay, these are kitty weights. Look at this. Look at that. You've got everything. The shape of the wings, the Arctic cod in the male's mouth. The male's job at this time of year is to feed up the female. Now, the reason we got that photograph is I heard the call, and it's something I'm familiar with, so I thought, I know it's around here somewhere, but look at the female's posture. You know, if, if, if you ask that, that, that female, I probably can't say this, but I'm going to, if you ask that female, if you put a bubble there, you say, how are you? The answer would be fine. Uh, but it's almost like, no, bring me chocolates, bring me jewellery, I'm done with cod. He's just trying to feed her up. That's the job. So you need time. You need separation with your photographs. Critical to have separation. I prefer it when it's flying, but here's the transference. He's got to feed up that one. Separation. Look at the gap between the bills. I lie awake at night with separation anxiety frequently. So let's start off the day. There you are. It's about five o'clock in the morning now. You're in front of the Monaco Glacier. There are set rules about how close you can be. Yeah, take a look at it. It is it's staggering. And of course, the reason you've got all of that ice below uh, is because there have been significant ice falls. This is one. That is a huge carving. And the turns, Arctic turns, and Kitty Wakes pulling away. That was just pointed in and fire away at about F10. And you can see here, that is the, the ice turning over, and you're going to get a bow wave off that. Um, you'll see a mo in a moment in a video. But Look at the color of that. That is old, probably maybe 10,000, 20,000 years old ice has never seen the light of day before or not for that amount of time. And it wouldn't have looked like that. Compressed all the air out of extraordinary color, extraordinary experience. So we got back on board after probably two and a half, three hours. And then 
got the uh, got some breakfast going. And then as we're pulling away from the Monaco Glacier, we had a, uh, we had a, a watch on the top deck, uh, Bo, uh, a Canadian lad, a terrific spotter. And he just radioed me, he just said, get up, up here. So, you know, I like hearing that. And on an island, there's three bears. Now, I don't know what's going to happen here, but straight away I'm telling people, right, finish your breakfast, we're going to launch Zodiacs in 10 minutes because we can more close here. I had no idea it's going to turn out like this. So you're in a Zodiac, we're only 50, 60 meters away. Swimming bears, pulling up here, stay with this. The expedition leader, David Berg, an absolute star, um, he'd never done more than three excursions in a day before. David had never worked with me before. He did five that day. Uh, the first one was against the glacier. I said, look, we're, we're gonna make the most of this. These, this is a mother. The, uh, the sub-adults are probably two years old, just over. Um, and they gave us a hell of a show in the water. Look, it doesn't matter what animal it is, whether it's a red setter, um, a, a lion or, a, or whatever it is, when they come out of the water, they're gonna do this. Of course they are. Um, they, they really are. And this was, this was extraordinary. And this was only the second excursion of the day, only the second one. Okay, this was the third. So the point was, is because we got a small ship, not some ethically derelict, morally bankrupt carbuncle of a cruise ship, we could moor close and we just kept an eye on them. And I said, let's go back. And every couple of hours, uh, the mother would, sorry, any of you want to be on that? Of course you do. I don't know why you're with me this evening and Jared this evening, if, if you don't. Um, the point is, is when they find it hard, it's, it's a struggle for them to feed ashore. So they're really scavenging. You know, they like ice. They like oh, whale carcasses or, or harbor seals or, or, or certainly bearded seals. So they have to still rely on mother. They're like teenagers that won't, won't leave home. And so every time they suckle, mum opens the optics. Um, they would then sleep. We'd go back to the ship, go to sleep, keep an eye on it. When they woke up, we came out. I don't, they barely looked at us at all. It's exceptional, a little bit late in our excursion number four, as you see. Now, when they roll around in snow, they're not doing it to, to pull a, a sort of Clinton's card pose. Uh, they're doing it to um, cool down. Their fur is hollow. Uh, and so when they compress it, obviously they cool down, particularly if they compress it in snow. There's a nice pose. You can see the youngster there uh, wanting to have get to, to, to the taps. Um, and so, yeah, and then they have a sleep. So we came out here. This was the most rewarding one. This was the last one. So they pose, had a bit of a stretch, a bit more polar bear, polar pilates there. Now the light's good. Now we're around 11 o'clock at night. And you get this gorgeous backlighting. You know, this as a photographer, never mind photographer, you know, this is underexposed about three stops. You're looking into a late sun. And then it finally came down to mum. And this sort of stuff, you, you know, you dream about as a photographer. But yeah, you're pretty exhausted by then. But who cares when this is what you're getting? Finally, they moved off. Mum wanted to really settle down. And so we pulled away. And yeah, that, that's a day. You know, just think about that. Look, you don't get days like that unless you're prepared to do time like this. There's a lot of that going on. Imagine if it's you. I'm competing with my Swarovskis against some uh, <laughs> pretty handy scopes there. That's the front of the Polar Pioneer. Lots of space. Good viewing points. Loads of vantage points. Critical. You have, you're not competing with 100 other people. Two days before that we got this. Now, this was a joy. I'm just putting a, a, a little two episodes from this extraordinary uh, expedition last year. A youngish uh, male on sea ice, probably that's the, the lens foreshortens, but that's a long way from, um, from the shore. Uh, and he put on a show for us for three or four hours. To give you some idea uh, of what it was like, yeah, that's, what I want as a photographer. I'm not interested because the angle's a bit high. I'm not interested in using a long lens. You'll see, um, I think that's Chris there. Um, he's using a phone. Oh my. But when you can use a wide angle, that's taken at 20 millimeters. When you can use a wide angle, there's a polarizer snapped on, bring it please for your wide angle lens. Yeah, that's very, very special indeed. Um, it really is. 
And then later, the chef made this sensational curry. Now, I know Jared's very partial to his rubies. And, you know, I could smell it. And I wonder whether the polar bear could smell that Jalfrezi we had that day. But anyway, he gave us a hell of a show. And as he moved off, the weather changed. You can see it's brooding behind now. And again, I think this next one was my favorite shot of the trip because you can just sort of languish and gorge yourself on it. That's how you want to see polar bears. It really is. Oh, by the way, I have to put this in. Uh, here's all your contacts. If you want to, if you want to come 16 to 25 June, you can do a photograph with your iPhone. I'll bring that up again. But hopefully this is going to work. Um, if it does, this was just taken with, uh, I think, an iPhone 7 and a few shots of last year's. Um, enjoy this. Jeez, the Bow Selector Twins. Fog Bow. Look at these sorry load of pilgrims. Oh dear. Okay, I think the important thing about that is that last uh, scene where I was being um, not unusually rude about some very good friends. We'd had a terrific time. Is I won't. That we went ashore there for an extraordinary walk, a proper one in two groups and arctic foxes but i want to go will not go ashore for the hell of it this is a good reason to go ashore this is difficult because it's uh, the tides aren't mapped particularly well and whilst i love nothing better than photographing polar bears on ice that is like photographing king penguins in the surf because the surf is different each wave so sea ice is different so each photo is unique which is an overused uh, epithet but it's correct in this instance but this is a place called disco book to you it's a devil with the tides, but if you can get into this chasm, there's probably 20, 30,000 uh, kitty wakes. And with that amount of birds, as you can imagine, that means, um, sorry, a couple of images. Very difficult not, you, not to get crossover with this amount of a disgraceful crossover on the left. But of course, it means the, the larder door is, is permanently ajar uh, for Arctic foxes. Um, and um, yeah. It's, uh, it's a good place because they will grab the fledglings or even the adults or the eggs. So yeah, look at this in this camp. That's a, that photo, like almost any photograph I take needs gardening. Look at that dead piece of whatever it is there. That's a disgrace underneath it. Now that's in the sort of semi coat. So that animal at this time of year would have a pristine white coat. Uh, as the seasons change, it's, it's kind of half and half. Because again, I was there in June as indeed will be uh, this year. Uh, this is an Arctic frog doing what it does, um, getting mobbed uh, by those gulls. Um, but and these are some young, um, you know, it's it's having a, a big discussion there. And these are young ones. This is uh, you saw the last bit of that video. As I said, that video taken on an iPhone seven. Bring your smartphones with you. You know, uh, particularly if you're showing photos to friends or yeah, you've all been there when when people say, "Oh, here's the." giraffe I took and here's another photo of it it moved its ear this time yeah a, a 10 second if you're disciplined a 10 second still video you know it's it's just it's extraordinary as long as the, the animal is relatively close uh what what you can what you can get now these are youngsters 
Um, I'm not sure this is Al Cornet. This is where something I'd always go ashore at. I'm not sure that's legal um, at, at, at that age, but a bit of air, but crossover air. And this was the same place in a, a few years later, um, uh, a crash of, of one, two, three, four, of, of six kids uh, there. So yeah, special. look, let's be clear. It's not just about polar bears. However, the, the basalt cliffs of um, Alcophilic, are uh, just a joy. I, I think I must have done 25 excursions here. There's one particular one I remember over everything else. So that's a perfect day there. You've got great visibility, sunshine, flat sea, and it is extraordinary. This is prime avian real estate. You got, I don't know, 25,000 kitty weights. You got uh, 25,000. No, probably more. Um, guillemots that's what you see flying there you've got kitty wakes you've got the sort of grim reaper that that are up and the top of the uh tenement blocks would be the glaucus gulls and of course running along the bottom are arctic foxes so let's just give you a go so that's an early excursion okay now where you know this is gorgeous weather the weather is a bit of ice has broken off um one of the glaciers now the weather's not always like that, but this photo is there for two reasons. A, I like photographing gloomy stuff like that. Simple processing job, just lift the shadows a bit, that's it, nothing more. I'm not sure, even with, there must be 50, 60, 70 birds in that shot. I don't think there's any crossover, which I waited until I saw that. That's nonsense. Uh, I didn't, but I like that. So that's a sort of wide angle photo. This next one is taken at a 50th of a second in gorgeous light. That's what I love. Anyone who knows my photography knows probably 60%. I'm de not deliberately, but almost always fluffing my photos because I like uh, slow shutter speeds. And when you've got thousands and thousands of birds, it's not hard to put them in. This was a brutal thing. This is a, um, this is a glaucous gull taking a young fledgling just from the wall from a guillemot fledgling. Uh, yeah, it's, it's brutal, a decent backlit, underexposed a bit. However, this is unusual. Those are beluga whales, um, very difficult to photo. Just swimming along, you can see where the guillemots uh, have, that, you know, have their perches. And when they hit land and hit the water, they, I, I sometimes think, and they sort of totter off, I sometimes think I've seen penguins fly better. In 2013, I did an early couple of hours, it was terrific. Went back for breakfast. I went up to the bridge to check um, what the, the schedule was because you can see what other ships are doing. And there wasn't another ship coming in until about 11.30. So we had time. And I said to um, I said to breakfast, everyone there, I said, look, I'm quite prepared to do another excursion here. Who wants to come? Everyone did bar nine. Um, that's 10 years ago almost. And they're still beating themselves up. When I, show, I, remember the, I remember the girl's name, Rose. She radioed me and said, Paul, we got a polar bear. I said, stop being silly. No, you haven't. She says, yeah, we have. This is a young male, about three years old. Now, that's a polar bear on what looks like, what looks like in a quarry. Uh, I mean, it's, it's still good. It then got a bit more exciting. Now, some of you will have seen sequences like this, but only on uh, planet Earth from the Canadian Arctic. I understand it was 68 days to get this sequence they filmed for. This was one extra excursion. Take a look at this. It then started clambering. Now, a young bear, it's got young male syndrome. What it needs is ice. It hasn't got it. I don't know whether it's been, it was left there. I don't know. Um, it's important. It's impossible uh, to know or to understand even the provenance of this. But that bear is not in a great position. So what it's trying to do is to find birds. Now, they have a simple advantage that they have the faculty of flight. Um, but the real problem for this bear is that even the, the return on energy invested to get an egg or a fledgling is, is just not worth it. But it doesn't really know that. You're in a Zodiac. You've got a belly full of breakfast. You're watching the Glaucus girl bothered. Why is it bothered? Now here you have it, a dichotomy. It, it embodied the problem for this bear. That bear can jump down onto that and take those two fledglings. They can't. The fledglings, they can't fly. That bear will then die because there's no way back. And it's a 70 foot drop. Unfortunately, it made the correct decision. It then took on another flash climb. And just this is top five. This is top five. And I remember saying it. Uh, I remember Derek and uh, who, who was on? I'm trying to remember the two South African photographers. I remember them in a moment with me. They said, we've never seen anything like this. It was absolutely extraordinary. Um, yeah. And the old, you know, game show 
analogy, you've got to be in it to win it. Um, this was something extraordinary. If you have a strict, stringent um, itinerary, you're not going to enjoy that. I mean, that, this is just with a pair of binoculars is extraordinary. It was a little chilly that morning. Got a couple of layers, some decent gloves. Some people had hand warmers. They had, a, as I said, a belly foot of breakfast. Um, yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, she is still looking for eggs and looking for and, and it struggled. Um, I don't know what um, I don't know what became of it. Um, I just don't. But yeah. OK, let's take you to another story. This is way north Bay of Seven Islands. Um, now, uh, that again, it's probably 10 or 15 uh, miles um, from shore. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's a. Uh, that's a decent site. I love animals in their environment, and that does it for me there. So let's just follow this on a bit. Uh, we're well over halfway in case people's stomachs are grumbling. Let's, let's see what happens here. So that's a, a young bear. Okay, it's just truffling and quartering the sea ice. That's not bad sea ice for, for hunting. And then it swims off, gets out, shakes off a bit, and we leave it because it rests. About an hour later, we found a big male. Now, this male has killed a seal, and it's a happy male, okay? And then it's obviously, I've never seen this before. It's putting its meal in the deep freeze. I, I haven't seen this behavior. We had Ian Sterling, the world's number one polar bear expert, and he was scratching his head just like the polar bears. Oh, Paul, I don't believe what I'm seeing here. Uh, Ian is an extraordinary man, uh, but <laughs> this is remarkable. And then it looks puzzled. It, has a bit of a rest here. And then it, it I, I like, yeah, great positioning. Quiet, small ship. You get this, it's about 10 o'clock at night. Has a bit of a rest. And we think this is extraordinary. And then, so the bear's resting. We pull away a little bit, grab some dinner. Someone comes running up to me. You're not going to believe it. There's a bear swimming in towards you. I have to hang on. And it was the one from before. So the bear gets out of the ice. That's the shade from the ship, not even looking at us. Once a bear, like a hyena has, has got this smell in its nose, it's, it's gonna be oblivious. It needs some root canal work again, as you can see from its nose. Uh, and uh, it goes, in. now look at the difference in size here. This is, uh, this is extraordinary. And the male retreats into the water and then thinks, no, I'm a lot bigger than you. That is not my photograph. It's one of two. I completely stuff that up. I do from time to time. If you are watching, who took that? Uh, I think your name is David. Uh, you had a lot, your lovely wife with you. you. You absolutely nailed that one. I think I got managed to get that in the papers for you. And so, yeah, there, and then it swam away. And then it had a, had a bit of a sock and then had a rest. Did again some Pilates. Bears do this. You know why now. And then once the male moved off a bit more, it jumped across and then it managed to get the polar bears like seals because they like the blubber. That's what they want to eat. That's what sees them through the winter. The, 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 the blood and, the, uh, and the, the bone and the marrow uh, and the rest is, is not, it's the blubber they want first. So the bear had left something on the carcass. This is the young one. And the mist came down, we pulled away. That's, that was extraordinary. That was about one o'clock in the morning. That's why the light is so good. Still daylight, 24 hours of daylight. And um, we pulled away, it was mist. So I said, you all go to bed. We can't do anything that mist. Uh, sorry, connections again. We do have cabins available. She's well over half full. Uh, and as I say, a small ship. Uh, this is the next morning. Woke up, beautiful weather. Uh, that's may look an extraordinary photo. It's just F-22 pointing into the water. I was on watch that morning. And the sun went in a bit, and I remember seeing a whale, and I thought, okay. And so, well, do I wake the ship up for it? And so I woke one of the staff members. I said, get up here. I'm, I'm way up on the top deck. We've got a whale, and would you come and verify? Because I didn't want to make the call. I, I'm not, uh, I know my cetaceans, but I hadn't seen this one before. This is a bowhead whale. And that was something extraordinary. I'd not seen one of those before. I really hadn't. That's taken very obviously with a long lens. Um, this is, I love polar bears on wide lenses like this. Oh, what a joy, what a joy in their environment. You see what I mean about the unique backdrop? 80% of any photograph is background. Subject, no, nah, background. And when it's that, it's special. When is that, it really is special. When it's this, it's even better. It's come to look at this again late. Um, so you get that lovely shadow. 
And if you want to be that person, we worked hard for that once a long time ago, and they're not bothered. It initially fled because somebody dropped a lens cap. Lens caps, camera caps, just don't, all right? Because it was a metallic sound, it scared it. It did come back. So that's taken with a wide angle. That's taken with a long lens. It's right below us having a, having a bit of a look at it. So long lens work is a few. There's a, those are youngsters here. And then they had to move off because there was a male around. Um, we did not want to see, uh, uh, you know, infanticide. Um, and these are posing. And I always remember this photo because it was the just before that, the, the, the youngster had stood up uh, and I didn't get a photo because I was helping someone. She was asking me about exposure or something. That's the job sometimes. So um, you sometimes get a long lens to get them swimming. That's with a polarizer. It swam quite close. This is another way they sometimes travel. That works doubly. They, they keep their bellies cool and they slide down the edge. But it's photos like this that I like because they take you there. That is known as a haul out of, of walrus. Now, there is a word for those animals. And I think you can use it with hippos as well. Uh, they like to be lying across each other. Sometimes bicker and squabble a bit. They can be a bit cantankerous. Um, but it's thigmotactic. Now, that's your word of the day. Uh, I think it's obviously uh, tactic is from tactile. Uh, but as love is, it was cold that morning. So you see that their breath a little bit. They're, they're tricky critters to photograph. Uh, but also they're inquisitive. You know, this was last year. There's Bo. There's our chief spotter. You'll notice we're armed when we go ashore. Um, and we are very delicate and sensitive. What we're not is conservation fascists. Oh, there's a polar bear four miles away. We better get back. No, no. We, we, we want you to be excited. We want you to enjoy. Uh, uh, we're not going to ruin it just so we try to make our, the sensitive part of our CVs massaged a bit. You see the polar pioneer in the background? Yes, it is small. Uh, and, um, but it's had a refit. Perfectly comfortable enough on board. There's a mixture of different cabins you can have. A little less, you shared facility, got ensuite cabins, you got two dining rooms, and you've got a bridge where everybody's allowed it and plenty of vantage points. There's even a little sauna. I think there's an old gym. Um, and yes, there is. And 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 the bar lounge where we spend a, a, a lot of our time. I always say about cabins in Spitsbergen, you sleep in them, not a great deal more. Now, so yeah, Warris is a big deal. And of course, that wonderful ivory on that one, but their blubber. Their body parts, that's where they were hunted. On the west coast, in off um, Hornsund field complex, that's, uh, yeah, you've got, um, you know, huts and birds. These are little orcs, and that's just lying down as they fly over. But also you've got a, a rather grim testament uh, to the hunting days where they hunted. Uh, hunting of walrus and polar bears, uh, was curtailed, I'm glad to say, in 1973. That's why you go to areas like you go to the Canadian Arctic in summer, you know, those bears are still being hunted. You go to Baffin Island in winter, you know, it's a little different. They're coming out. They haven't had hunters there, really, but, you know, I'm not going to get into a hunting debate. Point here, that, look, there are other things to see. You've got a sort of historical angle, but on this, I can assure you, job number one will be bears. Yep, you've got Arctic poppies. You've got ptarmigan. Uh, Jared can tell me there's an operation time I seem to recall uh, in the war and also you've got reindeer it's a nice little sequence uh, I like this uh, I took them and then I thought what am I doing uh, photographing reindeer you know they're just young ones I'm just going to sit and then eventually lie down and just enjoy myself someone else took that that so far is you know great yeah whatever um, but that's a much better experience and as I say it's about ice you know it really is you know, it's about, you know, there's not a polar bear on there. There's that lovely corona behind, but that's up against the ice cliffs on the southern side of North Island. And that's a beautiful afternoon. It's about connecting the ice with bears. This is the classic Spitsbergen scenery. You've got, uh, um, oh, come on, Paul, there's a, a, it's not a Pomeranian skewer uh, flying there, the glacier, the mountains. Yeah, you need something else. You've got the glacier complex of, of Belsen there and one big male polar bear. In the background, those dots are, are seals. That's what the, the bear is hunting. They don't have success rates like lions or cheetahs or leopards. Probably about one in 50 or 60 because those bears can just hop down the hole. Back in 2010, we found this female. Look at that photograph. 
the first photograph I ever took of a standing bear. It's dreadful. I wouldn't even give it a two out of 10 because I panicked, which I think is forgivable. And then I thought I switched cameras and took that photograph. Anyone out there prefer that one? I rather think you do. I then got a message from somebody I know from another ship saying, Paul, we got a whale carcass. There's a few bears here. I think you'd like it. I had to go back and say, Dutch, I need details. And again, we had to turn the ship around. We have experts on board, whether it is seals, polar bears, photography, ecology. You know, we, we can always fill the time. We prefer not to because it means we're doing something, but we can always fill the time. We had a day's sailing. And then it all came to fruition. This was in Holmia Book Tour. I posted something from this um, this afternoon. This is right up there. So there was a food source. It was probably a year or two old, uh, a sperm whale. And you had this hierarchy. So and that was the youngest bear. And I was a tiny one with mother. And we spent some time with this, as you can see here. That's the sort of photo I like. Lovely light, blue eyes. The bear's almost, almost insignificant. And then this was remarkable. So the, the, the mother, again, we discussed this earlier, opens the optics. And then they think it's their time at the dinner table. So they have a little rest first. And down she comes. You know, the, the carb is bothered because there's other bears around there. And that is the vertebrae of the whale. Now, that's an easy step down for mother for the, for the carb. Whew, that's quite a jump. It has a good look comes down, thinks, am I going to get something to eat? Now, the tide is in here. You're on a zodiac. You're 40, 50 meters away from this. Three excursions. And then gets a really big spray from our mama's had to dive down. You can see it's got a bit of food from the carcass submerged. So the comes thinking, I don't really like this. I'm out of here. But that's it. difficult coming down. Even more hazardous getting up. Easy step for the mum. Hillary step. For the carb look at that the effort involved finally pulls itself up but then comes back down because you know eyes bigger than stomach no it needs something to eat and it, and it obviously it's got a nose full of this so this was the moment now the that that's this is the last excursion we did one at about midday we did one at three for us several some people didn't do it what is i don't know i just can't understand that but this we this is now about 10 to midnight you're on a zodiac you're watching this poor bear pick its way along the vertebrae. And look at that. That's tricky for it. You know, you can see mother filling, you know, getting a load of nosh from the bear and, and it pauses. What it should have done, it stayed there and it didn't and it slipped, as you can see. And just watch this sequence as it comes up. Yeah, that's right up. This is right up there. And it shook off. I've had a lot of correspondence from people who are on that excursion today saying, yeah, best wildlife moment I've ever had. And, you know, we've cut the engines. We know what we're doing. They're not aware of us. And, yeah, the bear's out of there. These bears know when you're behaving. Look at this. That's the mother coming up. Yeah, you're behaving out there. You're not on a big fat cruise ship. You're not going shopping. I'll give you a little conspiratorial wink. So just coming to the end, all right, now. I think we're just about on time as well. Do some questions. So I hope you can join us in June. Wide angle. Wide angle. That's, that's actually a fish eye. Wide angle, wide angle, long lens, even extraordinary moments like this. A bear swimming underneath a waterfall. In that the glacial waters, you often get that lovely jade color. It is, it's, um, it's different there, it really is. But as I say, you need the right itinerary, the right ship. But I, I remember in 2009 having a full photo charter and the ship was seriously compromised by a skipper that was too callow and was a bit afraid of ice. And yeah, it was still fine, but it wasn't great. It doesn't have any of that. And by the way, um, we'll do some questions in a second. Jared will share that. But um, look, I ju just if anyone wants to direct message me about the trip, just the trip itself or some camera advice uh, or email me, paulgoldstein 59 at gmail.com, happy to do that, talk about the ship. Okay, so let's end this with a nice little sequence. Little baby cub. Just is a little bit cheesy, this. And they are just waving you goodbye. So, yeah, look, I really hope that's the Midnight Bear, one of my favorite bear shots. You can join us. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't strayed over time. It's not bedtime like it is for that very full bear there. And thanks for staying the course. Um, you know, I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, good. Now, Jared's going to, are you going to take this back over from me? Uh, do you want me to do you want me to come out of this?
uh, this is um, are, you, are you are you now in charge, Jared? Okay. So what do I need to do? Do I need to do something? Do you want to? I need to hear you now, don't I, for, for questions. Thank you very much. Uh, decrease for all, look at all those questions. Okay, they're all coming in. So do you want me, if you put them up, you can still hear me, yeah? Um, okay, if you put those questions up on the chat box, I noticed a, a figure there just coming in from a Terry Innes uh, saying polar bear numbers have decreased 40%. Not here, they haven't. But they have across a large area. Um, and look, it, they have suffered in perhaps, Terry, more insidious ways. Uh, and I remember an expert saying me, because of the pollutants, that uh, many more of them are becoming hermaphrodite, but um, which is obviously has its obvious problems. Um, and uh, yes, the, um, the, the, the non-binary bipolar bears, I mean, there's too many gags and it's too stupid and it's too topical. But yeah, there are many problems for polar bears. Biggest problem for all of them, whether it's in Churchill or whether it's here, is the ice. They need solid pants of ice. So I hope it's a good ice year for them this year. We all do. Obviously, if we can't find ice, you know, in between the islands or off Spitsbergen, we'll go north and find the pack ice because that'll always be there. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, what else have we got? Um, it, can you put it up? In I front think of I think, yeah, I think there are a few practical questions, which I think Sue has answered um, in the chat. Uh, area there so okay. how many zodiacs are um oh, yeah. are available yeah, i think very very good yeah half well, a dozen is that right oh yeah yeah you got 48 people you need five zodiacs i mean there will be six zodiacs i know but uh yeah, yeah absolutely but, uh, someone's just said polarizing filter yes bring it with you bring a couple uh because if you break one there isn't a shop for that on board yeah absolutely yeah good question and I, and I think um there were some questions about uh kit on board and what is provided and again oh, sue, okay. now, sue um, stepped in there yeah. And and Good. said, yeah, no problem. Um, welly boots, yeah, yeah they, they, boots they to some are provided. Yeah, and they're good ones as well. Yep. They are. Frankly, uh, yes, bring a tripod, Terry. You're asking absolutely. But if you've got a big lens, bring a tripod, definitely. Maybe a monopod for for when you're on the zodiacs. Um, yeah, in terms of you know, I've seen so many times people say, can we um, can we please uh, do you provide wet weather gear? You can't win with it because either people don't like. Color, or it's shower proof or weather proof or whatever it's 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 crazy um so just bring your own you need a down jacket to keep warm you need a gore-tex top and trousers uh that's fine someone just asked is june early enough look i can't tell you exactly what the ice is going to be but i've done this for 20 years and if you go too early you struggle to fill the ship it's a lot colder and if it is a big ice year you've got so much ice that it's very hard to spot things and very hard to get into areas. So in my experience, it's fine. I, I, I can't answer that exactly. It's, it's a concerned question, I realize. Uh, but yeah, middle of June, it's, it's two weeks earlier than I went last year. What else we got, any more? I mean, just it, Karen sort of mentioned, you know, climate change and mm. um, it is a perhaps the elephant in the room a little bit. Um, you go to these places you cannot help but be moved by what you see the wildlife and the landscapes and and the whole ecosystem and you inevitably end up thinking what can i do yeah and that's a question i know we often get Good question. Do, you, do you want to do you want to try and tackle yeah, that and you know people come i had an email from somebody today somebody's coming on a trip with me to the subcontinent india and what can i bring easy you know you know you can't bring raw steak for polar bears here um the, the most important thing when you go to an area like this for antarctica is you choose the right ship you choose a small sensitive ship you are not you're, you're not leaving a footprint uh you're not it, it's got you know refined fuel uh you're incredibly careful where you go shop and the only way they have strict restrictions is uh, around some of the old sites which are frankly just ruins of old wooden boats which uh unless we've seen you know, extraordinary polar bears. I'm not going to, frankly, spend time doing that when I could be doing something else. But the best thing you can do for anything like this is, you know, climate change isn't just, uh, I said, condensed in, in where you're traveling to. It's everywhere. We see it. Everywhere. My God, you know, 20 years ago, the news, you, you'd have a, a dreadful weather system 
news story about once every three or four months. Now it's almost every other week. Um, it's being educated, it's being an ambassador and not being quiet about it. And anything that bothers you, you know, you write to your MP. Now, you know only too well, Jared, how much I write to my MP. Uh, you do. Yeah, you write to MP, you make a noise about it, you sign um, org, change.org, uh, all of those things, you get involved. Uh, but you will have a far better understanding and you'd be a great deal more eloquent and persuasive um, about it if you've traveled there. Uh, but it's the nature of your travel. And, and look, I know, as I've said this before, um, this runs through um, everything that you do, Jared, and, and, and everybody you, uh, at Steps, you've, you've swallowed that ethic um, whole. Uh, Roy, sorry, I'm just going to dive in. Roy, I know you're, uh, you've traveled with me before. Yes, um, yeah, very good shout. Uh, you don't have to buy an incredibly expensive piece of glass, ring those charming people at Lenses for Hire, speak to uh, to Richie or, or or Stuart and hire a piece of glass. Yeah, I have done it many, many, many times. Um, so yeah, hire something if you like it, then then fine. But as I said, direct message me or email me or whatever, and I'm happy to answer. Um, you know, they're not, they're, there's no such thing as a bad question, but even if they sound a bit geeky, happy to, because you don't want to arrive under glass, or you might just, uh, I spoke to two people today who are coming on it and they wanted to know about binoculars. They've always had some little opera glasses and yeah, you, 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 th this is the place for a good pair of binoculars. There are, um, I've unmuted Sue. Sue, are there, are there binoculars on board? bring them bring them anyway bring them yeah you know uh jared you and i both we messed around with binoculars in the past you own a decent when you finally get a decent pair oh my god you know they're they're, they're part of your armory you know it's the thing i reach for first before yeah. my toothbrush in the morning um yeah they're, they're so important i think the point you make about being a vocal ambassador for for change after you've traveled to somewhere like Spitsbergen is vital and social media is understandably vilified at times but you know it does give you a incredibly um powerful mouthpiece to use especially if you've got some fabulous images like uh the ones that Paul has shared with us this evening um you know you can really make a difference and get get the messaging out there Paul mentioned about you know, footprint. I mean, whether we like it or not, there is a footprint um, involved in a, in a trip of this nature. But just so everybody is aware, Steps is offsetting that footprint both on your flights and on the cruise with World Land Trust. And, and that's something we do with all of our flights wherever you may travel in the world at Steps, um, just so you're aware of that. Um, Unless there are any more questions, my tummy is very much rumbling. Um, but um, I think just to finish things off, Paul, I thought I'd seen all of your images of Spitsbergen, um, but you've been keeping your powder dry because there were some beauties there that I hadn't seen. Those wide angle shots are the ones that I love more than 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 any, uh, and and just outstanding, mate. Just outstanding. I'm, no, no, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, um, thank you. Thank, well, thank you. And on behalf of everybody, you're all muted, so you can't thank him in person or, uh, or, or verbally, vocally. So I'm doing it for everybody. Um, it's been a wonderful Thursday evening. Thank you for sharing the images, your experiences and your stories um, as ever engaging. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions at all about the trip, please do contact us at Steps. Sue knows the Arctic. Um, I'd say almost as well as Paul, um, putting yes, you on was. the spot, <laughs> but she really no, no, does know. Good. She, she really does know her stuff. So um, get in touch with us and, and let us help you get out there and get some of those images that um, you'll be um, happy to hang on your mantelpiece. Thank you all. Enjoy your uh, the rest of your evening. And Paul's I've, I've yeah, never, just, the final word. Yeah, yeah, if you don't, yeah, if, if, if you don't <laughs> want. Yeah, just, uh, just uh, two things. I know you've recorded this. Uh, so please, um, I'm sure you'll put it on your social media, on Facebook or whatever. Send it to your friends. Um, number one. Number two, somebody just asked the penultimate question. Can't do it this year. Will you be doing it next year? Highly unlikely. My calendar, various reasons. So come this year, please. Come, come, come. Whatever you're doing, cancel it. Come. You know, your son's wedding. It's not as important. Uh, it really isn't. Um, and um, yeah, lastly, uh, yeah, this has been fun. Thank you very much for putting this on, Sue and, and, and Jared. Uh, but this is the easy bit, you know. Uh, as opposed to let's uh, middle of June. Come on, welcome on board. Let's see you there. Uh, I mean it. We work ridiculous hours for two reasons: a, um, because it's our job, but b, 
it, you know, for me to be on the bridge and look at the bow and see, you know, I don't know, 30 people there and other vantage points occupied and not a sound, just that little whisper, that buzz, that hum of people, you know, just sighing because, you, you know, these things mean so much more when you've worked for it. And finding a sort of buttery blob of bear, an ivory blob on a white canvas is tough. But if it was easy, we wouldn't do it. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks. Mm -hmm.